Hello and welcome. I am still in training for the Microsoft Excel World Cup, so I wasn't actually expecting to do anything remotely educational this week, but uh, I rolled my uh, my ran between dice to pick a case to do for today, uh, and it gave me this one, uh, navigating the game board from the semi-finals of the Microsoft Excel Collegiate Challenge, um, which uh, it's not the, the best training case for me because it's relatively simple. Uh, if you know what I know, but I figured it would be a good opportunity to make a quick video to explain the scan function because I love it and you should love it if you knew it. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. So uh, we'll do a little bit of theory on, on this page and then I'll show you how to solve the case with it. So uh, scan takes an initial value, an array, and a function. And uh, so here's a couple of examples. These are not done with scan. These are just done with regular functions, but this is the idea. So you start off with an initial value. Uh, you take an array. And then first you, apl you apply some function to the initial value and the first value from the array, and that gives you a sort of step one value. Then you apply the function to that value and the second value from the array, that gives you a step two. You apply the function to that and that gives you a step three, to that and that gives you a step four. So in this case, we're just doing a running total. So the function here is just add the thing above and the thing to the side. <coughs> um, so that, that is our function. So we're saying, you know, start with zero, then add three to that, then add four to that, then add five to that, then add six to that. Or equally, you know, here we're saying start with the word competitors and then, you know, append a space and alpha to that, append a space and beta to that, append a space and gamma to that, append a space and delta to that. Obviously, these are both things that you could do without scan. So you could just, you know, sum these numbers if you wanted to get 18. You could just use text join to put all these together if you wanted to get this output list. But scan lets you do much more powerful things than that. So the, the sort of general shape of this is, you know, you start with uh, a starting value here. Um, take a first value, create a second value, which is, you know, you apply your green function to the starting value and first new thing. Then you apply your function to that output value and the next thing, and then you apply your function again to that output value and the next thing. So the only thing you need to know is how do you, uh, how do you actually write these functions? Because you, you can't say, you know, equals scan this, this, and this, for example, it will not understand that. Or you can't say, you know, d6 plus c7, because it will not understand that either. So to write a function, uh, a custom function in Excel, you have to use the lambda function. So <clears throat> lambda is an anonymous function. Uh, it's Think of it as the function that takes these things and makes this thing. So for example, if I wanted to write uh, this scan, <clears throat> it would look like, uh, where should I put it? I'll just insert a column here. It would look like this. So we'd say scan. Initial value zero, array is three, four, five, six, and I want the function that takes these things, which is uh, an initial value and uh, the next value from the array, and returns initial value plus next value from the array, and that gives me this. So again, lambda is kind of intimidating to many people, but if you literally think of it as the function that takes these things and does this with it. Where, so in other words, you can pass in as many arguments as you want, and then the last thing is just you do a bunch of stuff with those arguments. That's all, all that a lambda is. Um, the important thing for a scan is your function has to take the arguments in the order, first the initial value, then the item from the array. Um, so I, I usually write my lambdas as lambda of A and V. I picked that up from Bo. Uh, but the, the logic is A for what has been accumulated so far and V for the next value. Um, so that's what I'm going to do for this case. So now let's talk a little bit about this case and then we can get some applications. So you're playing a simple board game. Uh, you move around the board game. You've got 21 squares. You roll it, roll a dice. Um, so there's, you know, an element of just uh, mapping the, the dice to numbers. Uh, but the main piece is you go around the board and then there's just different rules for how you finish. Uh, according to the different levels. So, and th th this is like very, you know, kind of real world board games have all these different flavors and variations. So uh, first you just have to, you know, get on or past the 21st square to win. And you just have to figure out on what turn do you win. Um, then second level, where are we? Uh, on the second level, you have to land exactly on the 21st space. And if your roll would take you past it, you don't move. Um, and then it, you figure out how many turns that takes you to win. For level three, you have to land exactly on the 21st space, but if you go past the 21st space, you restart at the beginning of the board and continue moving. So if you were on the 19th space and roll a four, you end up in the second space. So you go 20, 21, one, two. <clears throat> uh, and then on the fourth level, 
even more complicated. Let's see. Uh, if your roll takes you past the 21st space, you restart at the beginning of the game board space zero. Uh, for example, if you were on the 19th space in roll four, you'd start at the very beginning. If your next roll is a two, you'd end up on the second square. Okay. Uh, if you have not reached the end by your 60th turn, your answer should be 60. Okay. So that's the idea. So how do we, uh, how do we scan this? Well, the first thing is we want to convert these dice to numbers. I often use my Unicode trick, but since I'm being vaguely educational here, uh, we'll just actually let's, since I'm being vaguely educational, let's use good practice and name these. So we'll call this uh, dice and we'll call this, I don't know, points, pips, we'll call it pips. Uh, so then we can use XLOOKUP to look up the whole array in one go. Uh, so we'll look up that in dice returning pips. And that gives us all the numbers. <clears throat> and so then if you think of it as, uh, I think it specifies, yes, it specifies that we start on the start square, which is square zero. Um, so start at zero and you can just say that plus that uh, in our you know non-scan view of the world. And then you just have to figure out for level one, which is the first one of these that gets above 21. And that's here and that's eight, which matches the example. So how do we do that with scan? Say equals scan initial value, array, lambda, a, v, a plus v. And then we've reproduced all of that. Uh, and then we just want to figure out where does uh, at least 21 occur in that for the first time. So we would say x match, um, sorry, uh, 21 is the lookup value against this lookup array. So we're looking up in this array of, you know, four, five, eight, nine, 11, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we want to find the exact match or next larger item. And that will tell us it happens at square eight. Uh, and then if you want to kind of keep this even more tight, you can just put this into the formula as well. So instead of this, we'll just have this. And then it all happens in one formula. And we can take that, put it up here. And then, oh, oops. All right, something went missing there, so I have some reference going on here. Ah, yes, sorry, because I pointed to a cell with zero in it instead of just putting zero in the scan. Okay, uh, so there we go, and then hopefully we can copy this down and they'll all be right, and they are. Okay, so then for the next level, uh, we just want to change what happens when we get near 21. Uh, and that, this is where the lambda comes into its own, because it's just, it's super simple. So. In level two, you must land exactly on the 21st space. If your roll takes you past the 21st, you don't move. So here, I've got a starting position and a roll, and I just want to give it a new function. Instead of just adding them together, I want to say if a plus v is greater than 20, no, sorry, greater than 21, then I don't move. In other words, I stay at a, don't add the extra dice. Otherwise, a plus v. And that's it. Uh, so then level three is just going to be, again, a slightly different rule, a slightly different lambda. So for level three, if you roll your dice and you restart at the beginning of the game and continue moving. So for example, if you're on the 19th space and roll a four, so let me just refresh my memory. So 19th space would be one, two, three, four. Okay. So you, you just go back to one. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to do mod 21. Um, so, uh, I guess, again, I'm trying to be faintly educational here. So uh, if you don't know mod, mod gives you the remainder when you divide one number by another. So for example, if you divide 14 by three, uh, you can take four uh, threes out of 14 and then there's two left over. So mod gives you the two. Um, but mod is very handy if you have loops like this, like a clock, like months of a year or whatever. If you want to say, go to the next month, go to the next hour, uh, mod is, is good at doing that. So in this case, if we get above 21, um, then we want to go back to one. So what we're actually going to do is take the number that we expect to end up on, uh, divide it by 21, and take the remainder of that. The one nuance is that uh, if you're on 21 itself, uh, you divide by 21, you're going to end up with zero. So we're going to have to, first we'll subtract off one, then we'll take it mod 21, and then we'll add the one back. And that way, instead of having values that are between zero and 20, we'll have values that are between one and 21. So... What does that look like? I'm just going to put the lambda on its own line to make this a little easier to read. Um, okay, so we're going to say 
given a plus b, we want mod a plus v minus 1 by 21 plus 1. And that's it. And then level 4, we need to modify slightly to, uh, to allow for the error case here, because there are, I guess, some cases where you never make it. Um, and so again, this one's this one's pretty simple. Actually, it's it's going to be easier to copy this one from level two because the formula is more similar. So here, again, the, I'm copying from level two because the logic on level two was if you get past 21. So we've already gotten if a plus v is greater than 21. So just instead of uh, staying where you were in that case, you go back to zero, and everything else stays the same. Uh, but now we need an if error. Uh, actually, let's just do it without the if error and see how many get there. Yeah, so we've got three that error out. So then we'll wrap this in an if error because the interpretation of not finding it is that it's 60. And that's it. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a pretty pretty short case. That, I mean, this one was not, I think, meant to be a, a half-hour case like, uh, like the usual eSports ones. Uh, but if you, know, if you know scan and if you, uh, if you go with the right setup and just modify it slightly as you go along, this is probably like a, a five-minute case or something like that. Um, yeah, okay. That's all I got for today. See you next time. Bye-bye.